problems with that. And the main one really is it's sent because of the nature of it, it attracts big builders who are working on um, <coughs> next reputable sites, low quality sites, uh, thin affiliate stuff. So that's kind of a massive spam signal that all of these network sites are giving up. Um, which is fine if you know you are a thin affiliate site or you know you're not too worried about where your links are coming from. But again, thinking about agency side people working on big brands, limited clients probably aren't going to want to see a lot of links coming from these um, slightly spammy places, and it's probably dangerous getting mixed up in those kind of places. Um, you know, it also can get expensive using these things. Um, I, I don't know; they're mostly US based. I don't know if you would consider that niche. Building links for a UK site. Um, so, if the theory of using these networks works, um, I kind of started thinking about which parts of that you could apply to um, kind of more clean, above the board campaigns. And you know, the the kind of natural progression to that was to set up your own blog network. Um, so the the main benefit, really, I think, of rather than using somebody else's network, running your own is that you cut down massively on that spam element, so you reduce the risk significantly. Um, I mean, not completely, there's still some risk involved with this. Uh, but because you're not going to link out to rubbish, you know, you're not going to link out to upgrade sites and dodgy affiliate sites, you're reducing the spam signal on your own network. The other kind of thing that I liked about this approach theory at least was um, as a business owner you when you're building links if you're doing things like um, content syndication and guest posting and that sort of thing it's all good you, you write an article you get a link there but what you're doing is you're giving away a lot of intellectual property so um, you know some content <coughs> maybe is actually fairly decent you're giving away and helping another um, site owner um, so if rather than giving that content away, you can keep it on sites which you own and you control. What you're doing is building a kind of residual value in your business rather than um, giving it away and making it building into an expense that's more than investment. And in the future, you don't know how these sites are going to develop. Potentially, you could look at monetizing them in other ways. So I kind of set about um, building up my first network, aiming for around 50 sites. Um, these are level of steps which I took and I'm just going to talk through those now. What I would say is there's you know there's more than one way to skin a cat. I probably would. But, um, you know this isn't necessarily the best way or the right way to do this or certainly not the only way. Um, so other people would dispute it but these are kind of the things that I managed to make work with it. So the first thing you need to do is to go out and get hold of a load of domain names. The Kind of traditional thinking when setting up a blog network, and certainly what those big public networks do, is they go out and they buy dropping domains, so domains which already have paid branding and links pointing to them. People have let them lapse and they register them and then put blogs on them. And that can get expensive. 